everyone, and this is N24 News R from our studio in Batao, The Gambia. Coming up, President Adam Abaro and his Meet the People store said government is set to buy groundnuts at 32,000 dollars and urges Gambian farmers to sell their groundnuts to the government. One Baba Perjain, believed to be a UTG student, sues Wayek to court on civil suit to see his private wife's scripts. In sports, Olympic Africa win Gambia Volleyball Knockout Final to become first team to win back-to-back doubles. On the international front, Nigeria launches new banknotes to mock up counterfeits. Police in Malawi arrest former President Peter Mutarika's son as part of investigation to an unmarked discovered mass grave. These are more to feature in our today's bulletin. Stay tuned. Thank you for the time and if you're just joining us, this is N24 News R. We start the bulletin with Baba Karjan, a student at the University of the Gambia, has instituted a civil suit against the West African Examination Council, WAIEC, before the High Court in Banjul. Baba Karjan is seeking the High Court order for WAIEC to produce his complete and certified 2021 private examination scripts for the West African Senior Secondary School Certificate Examination. When the matter came up before presiding judge, Justice Ibrahim Jaita, the lawyer representing Wyatt, Barista S.K. Job, raised preliminary objections and urged the court to strike out the suit, noting that the suit was incompetent before the court. Counsel Job pointed out that the matter cannot be determined under the originating summons. He further argued that the originating summons is incompetent and has no legal basis, adding that the relief sought by Baba Pajan cannot be granted by the court. The plaintiff, who informed the court that he would represent himself, craved the court's indulgence to grant him a short adjournment to prepare and to respond to the preliminary objection raised by the defendant. Justice Ibrahim Jaita therefore adjourned the matter to the 14th of December 2022 for Baba Jain to respond to the preliminary objection raised by the defendant. With the theme this year being together we can accelerate socio-economic growth and maintain peace and stability, Minister of Women's Affairs Fatou Kinte has given over two million dollars to women groups which was presented to the groups by President Adam Obaro. Our reporter, Basil Luka, who is traveling with the president on the tour, has more on this. Minister of Women's Affairs, Honorable Fatou Kinte, gives $2,800,000 to 20 women groups among residents of North Bank, believing that it will serve as a better assistance among vulnerable livelihoods. The presentation was made by President Adam Abaro after Minister Kinte's speech, where she says the money comes from the Women Enterprise Fund, which was initiated under her leadership through support from the government of the Gambia. This was made during the nationwide Meet the People Tour at Gunjur Football Field in Lower Badibo on Tuesday, 22nd of November, 2022. The minister adds on her speech that the Women Enterprise Fund's second phase also to be distributed among 30 women groups in each region of the Gambia. Basiruka reporting for N24 News in Farafeng. President Adam Abaro has announced in a meeting held on Monday at Nuku Kevin Village that his government would buy a ton of groundnuts for $32,000 this year, in contrast to last year's $28,000 per ton. President Barrow was speaking as he commenced his 2022 Meet the People's Tour, an annual constitutional requirement nationwide tour. This year's tour is under the theme, Together We Can Accelerate Socio-Economic Growth and Maintain Peace and Stability. This tour is an opportunity for communities of Lower Yomi to raise their concerns through a dialogue with the President for possible solutions. Mr. Barrow has urged all Gambian farmers to sell their groundnuts to the government, noting that he has the belief that some farmers would still sell their groundnuts to middlemen who would later resell them outside the country. I quote from President Burroughs' speech, we need to help one another because those middlemen do not give you fertilizer. It is the government that subsidizes the fertilizer for your farming activities, end of quote. He further revealed that the Gambia government spent 
500 million dollars on fertilizer subsidies, costing the government 3,500 dollars per bag of fertilizer by selling at 2,000 dollars to farmers. Shine Light in Girls Education German organization conducted a day-long training for the police, community members and students on gender-based violence held at the Joint Operations Center in Brusseby as they got to discuss about issues relating to GBV. The training is to enhance the participants' knowledge of issues surrounding gender-based violence. Our reporter Fatoubi Kamara tells us more in this report. Shine Light in Girls Education Germany Gambia Organization is a non-profitable organization fighting for girls education and sexual and gender-based violence. Sexual and gender-based violence is a violence committed towards women and girls including rape, harassment and female genital mutilation. Like other countries in the sub-region, violence against women and children in the Gambia has been one of the most dominant to human rights violations as per reports. Gender-based violence or violence against women and girls is a global pandemic pandemic that affects one in three women in their lifetime. 35% of women worldwide have experienced either physical or sexual intimate partner violence or non-partner sexual violence, the World Bank report says. Ibrahim Fadere is the president and founder of the organization. The aims and objective is to put set light in girls' education and also to, to, to save the long-term darkness of girls' education crisis and or further encourage women's participation in social economic development in this country. Um, we are more into girls' education. Um, in 2020, we support six girls. In 2021, we uh, were able to support 44 girls uh, with educational materials. We include books, bags, two books, two bags, two uniforms. In 2022, we also um, support 67 girls. And in 2021, we tried to um, include three new projects um, in our organization. Um, one project is um, the, that's the educational project. The other project is the Soul Sisters project. Um, the Soul Sisters project is a microfinance loan that we give to women. Uh, we call it a revolving loan. We give an, a certain amount to women and then um, for three years without no interest. Uh, after the end of that three years, the woman will give it to another woman. So that's why we call it Soul Sisters Project. We have another project also called uh, Women to Women God Project. Um, we are uh, giving goats to women at the rural area to rear it. All those are geared to work um, the upliftment of women's financial um, stability in the rural area. According to UNFPA, one in four women aged 15 to 49 years will become a victim of sexual and gender-based violence and 26% of ever-married women have experienced physical, sexual and emotional violence by their husbands or intimate partners. About 24% of ever-married women have physical injuries due to intimate partner violence. Kopul Tida Kuli and Fatu Dawa are participants and they have shared what the training means to them and how they intend to utilize the knowledge from the training. This training basically is on gender-based violence and we all know that gender-based violence now is very common in our society. So it will be very good as police officers we know how to handle our gender-based cases at the office. And also we will also sensitize the communities on some of these gender-based violence activities that are happening in our environment. Um, I can say this training will help me personally to um, widen my understanding towards GBV and other related matters and also it will give me that platform to also understand certain things so that I can also go back to my district and then do what is necessary of me. Basically, um, if you look at me, I'm the speaker to the District Assembly for the Welfare of Girls and Young Women in Combo East, um, in Combo East District, uh, where you know that we have 33 villages, and in all these villages, we make sure that we have structures. And in these structures, we make sure that any individual that have the opportunity to go out and have, I mean, get information about certain things, you come back and disseminate those information. So me particularly, what I'm going to do is just to make sure that I disseminate this information to the structures, and those structure people that are opportune to be part of that particular training will go back to their community level, have one-to-one -one discussion. Shine Lights in Girls Education Germany Gambia is a registered organization in the Gambia aimed to uplift girls' education and sensitizing issues affecting women and girls. The organization was established in 2020 under the Attorney General Act 1997 Constitution and also registered in Germany called EV. The occurrence of sexual and gender-based violence in some communities in the Gambia has been seemingly normalized to the extent that 
that 40 percent of women believe it is acceptable for their partner or partners to hit them a unfpa report sues reporting for n24 news uh, i am far to be camera and away from that story now time for some sports knockout final which saw Olive Afric win Gantel Gansel three sets to one to win a back-to-back -back draw. The final did not see a colorful end but jubilations were all over for the winners and here is more of the report by a sport reporter far from Miss Korea who watched the final to the very end and gathered this for us. The Gambia Volleyball Federation played its 2021-2022 knockout final at the Independence Stadium Volleyball Lawn which saw Olim Afrik win a back-to-back -back double. Olymp Africa began the day with the first staff being theirs, but the first point being Gamtel Gamtel's. The fans expected it to be perhaps Gamtel's day, but the second, third, fourth and fifth point of the first set was all Olymp Africa's. As Sanusi staffs were unrecepted by Gamtel. At first, it was more of a serving set as Jahara Koita brought back Gamtel to level terms on Juice 4, but Olim Afrik again seized their moments to win the fourth set 25-18. Just like the fourth set, Gamtel took the first point, but with a different approach as it was more of a point for point affair for the first 12 serves. This time around, it was Olim Afrik who needed the technical timeout to sort out themselves when they trailed 15-11. The technical timeout yielded only two points after the restart before Gamtel Gamsel called for a technical timeout. Just like the start, so it was for the end as Gamtel ended set 25-20 as winners. At 18-19 of the third set, things took a drastic turn when Gamtel Gamsel called for a substitution only for the substitute to be asked back to prompt in a talk which can tell, which led to a sending of and a red card point being overturned. The third set was won by Olymp Africa 25-23. Many were expecting a colorful ending, only for the deciding set to be interrupted and the referee walking off to give Olymp Africa the bragging rights over Gamtel Gamsel. Amadou Jaju is the captain of Gamtel Gamsel's side who asked his colleagues to leave the court resulting to the forfeiting of the final. Of course, of course, I regret in a sense the team should play without me because that's why I was talking to Alu because I was sent off and they play. I was sent off and they play. So I, I, can, I will say I'm sorry for that because I should not uh, tell them to go to march out. But come on, it's sport. Sometimes, you know, things happen unacceptable. Yeah. On a day Olim Afric fans will sing and cheer all day, the head coach of the side, Modun Jai, wasn't as cheerful and glad as the fans. This final will go down to the history books as one final that did not see the end. To see the fourth and perhaps the fifth set being played, Modun Jai is Olim Afric's coach whose side was declared winner. First of all, I don't want this team to end, in, to end it like this. Because of the boys, uh, it's all about the boys. But that's what I say. Because of they, really, they really work for it. Because of this season, they really struggle to win this back-to-back. -back because of we lost a lot of players. Olim Africa now become the first male team to do a back-to-back -back double in volleyball as they defended their title over the same opponent they faced last season in the knockout final. Aside the match on Olymp Africa's triumph, awards such as the most valuable male player, the best setter, was handed to Bar Alpha Cisse. In the ongoing World Cup, a stunning late 
comeback from Japan saw our four-time winners, Germany, fall to a shock defeat in their opening World Cup game in Qatar. Germany dominated a frenetic match for large spells, but failed to capitalize on their pressure before Japan caused the Khalifa International Stadium to erupt into a mix of celebration and surprise. Substitute Takuma Asano squeezed in a thumping strike from a tight angle to make it 2-1 to Japan and ran over to the photographers in the corner of the stadium in sheer delight. There was a collective force in the arena as the ball rolled down from the roof of the net before supporters realized it had gone in. And away from sports, we now look at the latest happenings of the internationals right after this. Police in Malawi have arrested the stepson of former president Peter Mutharika as part of an investigation into the discovery of an unmarked mass grave in the northern Zimba district last month. Malawi's authorities said that 29 bodies retrieved were likely of Ethiopian immigrants. Police have said their investigations led to the arrest of Tadirika Mafubsa as well as impounding a vehicle they suspect was used in transporting the dead men. A pathologist who is part of the team conducting autopsy on the bodies said partial results have been presented to the Malawi police and that a full report will be submitted at the end of the month. Malawi is grappling with the problem of human trafficking in which organized syndicates traffic men, women and children from East African countries including Ethiopia and Somalia. From Malawi they are further trafficked to South Africa, Europe and the United States. In 2020, the Malawi High Court sentenced former Home Affairs Minister Uladi Musa and an immigration officer to five years imprisonment for helping non-Malawians obtain Malawi passports. And away from that, how does a government fight currency counterfeits? New banknotes are being launched in Nigeria in an effort to fight counterfeiting and the financing of Islamist groups and hostage takers. It is hoped the introduction of the new 200, 500 and 1,000 Naira notes will help mop up the excess currency in circulation and reduce inflation. One kidnapping gang has already responded to the launch of the new currency. They have halved their ransom demand for two adults and two children seized in Zampar State, insisting it's paid in the brand's new notes. And from that, we say goodbye as this is the end of today's bulletin. Stay tuned to your favorite N24RTV.